comets are the most spectacular thing in the sky, in, at least in the nighttime sky. Comets are important because they represent the leftover bits and pieces from the outer solar system formation process, which took place four and a half billion years ago. As the planets formed, the first thing you got was tiny clumps of dust in the inner solar system and in the outer solar system, dust and ice. The comets are what made the cores of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. But the planets are so hot that the chemistry changes completely. Whereas the comets have remained frozen the entire time, so the chemistry is preserved. Comets are basically made up of a number of different regions. A dirty ice ball, relatively small and black. When it gets near the sun, these ices start vaporizing, which forms a atmosphere. And then when some of these dust particles are blown back away from the sun because of the pressure of sunlight, you form a dust tail and often a gas or ion tail. Comets and asteroids have always gotten bad press. The dinosaurs checked out 65 million years ago because of an asteroid impact. But what we don't hear about is how important these objects are in terms of bringing the building blocks of life to the early planet. Comets almost certainly brought most of the organic material and much of the water to Earth. In a sense, we wouldn't even be here without comets and asteroids. Scientists like to put objects in boxes. Comets should look this way. Asteroids should look this way. But Mother Nature keeps on knocking the boxes over and saying, no, it doesn't look that way. The few comets that we've seen, they all are very different from one another. And so the question is, are all these objects different from one another? The Epoxy mission is an extended mission for the Deep Impact flyby spacecraft. After we went past Comet Temple 1 and drove an impactor into it, we spent a year or more observing extrasolar planets, and we are now on target for a flyby of Comet Hartley 2. Which is interesting in the sense that it's one of the smallest objects we've seen, and it's thought to be active over 100% of its surface. If we understand the comets really well, it will tell us how all the planets got made. That's why we choose comets to study. The Deep Impact mission was a mission to Comet Temple 1 to deliver an impactor in 2005. The instruments on the Deep Impact spacecraft were designed to be diagnostic in a flyby of a comet. We got some fascinating results from Comet Temple 1. But once we got past Temple 1, we had plenty of fuel left, the spacecraft was healthy, then immediately everybody set to work on figuring out what new bodies we could get to. That's what uh, led to the proposal to come go to uh, Comet Hartley 2. It's really a good deal for, for NASA and for the, the American public to send a spacecraft to a, a whole new mission for maybe uh, a small fraction of what the, a new mission cost. We were able to retarget the spacecraft using a few flybys of Earth take advantage of the gravity assist from Earth to retarget ourselves, change our trajectory just enough so that now we're able to get to Comet Hartley 2 in November. Because this wasn't what the spacecraft was planned for, there's challenges and there's uh, inevitably going to be surprises. The geometry of the Temple 1 flyby was such that we could look at the comet and take images at the same time that our high gain antenna was pointed at Earth. Because of the geometry of the Hartley 2 flyby, when we're pointed at the comet on approach, our high gain antenna cannot see the Earth so we cannot downlink data in real time. So we have to design everything to, for one thing, protect that imaging sequence to make sure that no matter what happens, we're able to recover and keep taking images. The things we will be looking for will be how different is the nucleus compared to the other comets that we've been to. What does the nucleus look like that makes it so active? Can we see which parts of the comet are emitting so much gas? And what's the nature of the chemicals, the compounds that are coming off the comet? The excitement about studying comets is really driven by getting a better understanding of the early phases and early formation of our solar system. Comets essentially have been in the refrigerator since the beginning of the solar system. And so when we explore these objects and we find out what they're made of, we get a look back at to the beginning of the formation of the solar system. This mission is very economical, and we're going to get fantastic science from this flyby opportunity. Mm -hmm.